What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I'm going to discuss certificate authorities. It was a very popular topic that a lot of people asked me to do so I'm talking about it. Again, on this channel, in order to talk about any things, we don't ask what it is, we don't ask what is a certificate authority, we don't ask what is a certificate, we ask why does it exist and that just immediately uh, answers a lot of questions because why does this tech exist? There is a reason, there was a problem at one point and we ran into it and we needed a solution. We invented certificate for that solution and then we ended, invented something to manage the certificate and that's the certificate authority. So let's jump into it. Classic example, I have a client, you guys love these hand motions, don't you? And they have a server, right? I have a client, the server, they want to establish, for simplicity, let's use HTTPS. Right, I know TLS can be established on other protocols, but simplicity rules. This is a web server, a caddy, right? And it's running on port 443. And and and, and uh, let's say this web server is, mm, I don't know, supposed to be Google, right? And this is a client that about to consume the Google homepage. What do we do first? We establish a TCP connection, assuming HTTP2. HTTP3, that's not correct, but Let's assume HTTP2. I'm assuming TCP connection, three-word handshake, all that jazz. Now I have a stateful TCP connection. So before we send any data, the GET request to actually give me the information from Google, we establish da -da -da -da, TLS handshake. Talked about TLS all the time. Check out these playlists, really, the TLS. I'm going to make a playlist just for TLS because I have a lot of videos on TLS. All right, so now we establish a TLS right? Why TLS? Well, we need to encrypt. We need nobody. We don't want anybody in the middle to actually uh, sniff our stuff, right? I don't want people to see what I'm searching for. So now I'm going to do TLS hello, all that jazz, right? Let's agree on a key. So we, the same key encrypt and decrypt, right? So that's simple stuff. Now the client and the server agrees on the key. And then now the client sends the first get request, encrypts it first with, this, with the same key that they agreed upon, and then send it the information. The server receives that encrypted request. Anybody in the middle cannot find out what the heck they are, they are talking about because it's encrypted. Nobody has the key except those two. Google server receives that encrypted, decrypted, read it, process the request, build the index.html, ship it back. No, before we ship it, encrypted the same key, ship it back. And the client does the same thing. They're decrypted and crosses and render on the page or whatever. Now, how do I know that as a client, I am actually communicating with Google? You might say, well, I have the IP address, duh, right? I have the domain. I was just literally typing google.com. What the heck are you talking about? Of course, I'm going to Google. Unfortunately, it's not that easy because let's rewind the same thing that we talked about here, but with a caveat. Client, beautiful client, a beautiful server, Google. And here's the thing. I'm about to send the client hello to agree on the TLS handshake, right? On this symmetry key. I send it. Someone in the middle says, wait a second. And you can... You can do this. Not easy, but it's possible with some maneuver at the routers. So I intercept your request. The packet at the layer four level, that's enough for me because I need to read your TLS parameters. And I will see that, oh, you want to go to google.com? Okay. I am going to stop right there and I'm going to respond respond on behalf of Google because I know the IP address of Google. I can respond as if I came in from Google. I'm going to put the IP address of Google there, but actually it's it's just some shady Karen, right? So Karen replied back with its own TLS parameters, impersonating Google. You have no idea that this happened, right? Because at the client side, you got a key. How do you know that this is Google's key? Or it's just a key. It's a random number, right? 
I'm assuming that you got you didn't get a key, you get a number, and that's the Diffie-Hellman parameters here. And then what will happen here is the client thinks that it talks to Google, but it's think it's talking to uh, some random Karen, right? And Karen have the keys now. And then Karen, what it does to make things even more legitimate, it establishes a two-way communication between itself and Google, and then start establishing the keys. So you'll have Karen will have two keys: Google key and the client's key, and it will start just man in the middle in very easily. After six minutes, I will now explain to. We needed something to verify that Google is actually Google, that Yahoo is actually Yahoo. Who the hell uses Yahoo these days? Bing is actually Bing, right? And, and all these other websites, right? How do you know? So we need some sort of a certificate that proves that this is Google. And you might say, well, I can fake the certificate, right? Because, because I, can, I can just say, hey, um, here is me. I am Google. And I can as easily as Karen, Karen can as easily say, hey, I am Google. This is the certificate, right? So the certificate by itself telling you that this is Google, even that is not enough. So we invented some other third party that both those guys trust. That's the only solution we have today. We need to introduce a third party that signs that and 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 kind of proves that this is google and nobody can fake that right and that certificate that is called the certificate authority things like let's encrypt things like digisign things like antitrust whatever all of these certificate authorities have certificates that they they use the public and private key mechanisms very similarly so and and now let's talk the whole thing again with the certificate authority sorry so google in order to start up even a web server running on port 443 with tls it has to provide a certificate otherwise the web server well it will start but it will have an invalid certificate that's that's a must for https so how do you do that you obtain google or whatever website talks to a third party called the certificate authority and says hey my name is google google.com and i live here here is my public key here is my private key here's my information please give me a certificate so that third party which is let's encrypt takes that information encrypts it with its private key the, the certificate authority private key and then now you have a signed things of like a signed certificate right if we took the same scenario client and server client communicate with the server and then establish the tcp connection and then client hello and then the server hello will send the certificate and here is the important part. The client, what does it do next? It has a certificate. It needs to verify the certificate that is actually Google. How does it do that? Very simple process. It, it says, it claims that, okay, I have a Google certificate. It, let's encrypt. First of all, I do I trust let's encrypt at all, right? In my client application i do trust it because it's installed with my operating system that and i'm not going to go through all that but there is something called the root certificate that there is a parent certificate authority that signs that trust let's encrypt and that is trusted on my machine so now it's okay i trust that okay i'm gonna take your public key which is the, the certificate authority which is available i'm gonna encrypt the content that is uh, available and that, that google.com sent me right so google.com and i'm going to compare it against the encrypted part that remember that the certificate authority actually encrypted now if those two matches that gotta be the certificate authority it's gotta be trusted but if those didn't match that means someone changed it right because nobody can actually 
uh, fake the signature because nobody has the private key of the certificate authority except the certificate authority. And that's how the trust happens, right? So now let's throw in Karen in the middle. So Karen, if I communicate with TLS and then and I said, okay, TLS, hello to the server and Karen intercepted and says, okay, server, hello. So, well, Karen doesn't have Google certificate. So it's gonna fake a certificate saying, oh, this is google.com, I am I am google.com. And, uh, well, if she, if she says that she is google.com, then she needs to a certificate authority to, to sign it. Nobody, nobody obviously will sign that for her because she's not Google, right? But if she managed to self-sign it, which is very easy, then she's going to self-sign and claim to be Google. Very easy. You can do this with OpenSSL. Just generate a self-signed certificate assuming you're Google and reply back right and then the client will look at this and say okay do I trust Karen self-signed certificate authority nah I don't trust that what the heck happened I want to Google and now I'm getting this error so you get an error that is nasty right that is very nasty and that's immediately you're gonna terminate the TCP that's the that's a good clients, right? But imagine Karen have uh, have is dealing with a certificate authority that is trusted and managed to trick some certificate authority to sign her certificate as if claiming claiming that she is Google. Let's say that is possible. It's very hard, but it happened before, by the way, guys. Uh, a leaked certificate authority private key was leaked and people started generating certificate based on that certificate of authority. And then just that, that immediately shattered that certificate authority trust immediately. Blech. But let's just imagine Karen did that. She got private key of the certificate of authority and she generated a certificate authority certificate for up, uh, claiming to be Google and reply there. The client will look and say, oh, I trust this Let's Encrypt or I trust this whatever certificate authority and that it will allow it in that case. That's why I always, always, always like to click on the padlock when I am in public Wi-Fi and look at actually the, the chain of the trust. It's like, okay, who's actually signing? Is it really Google? And it's really, is it really the actual Google root, right? Or is this some other stuff? And here's another thing that uh, government of Kazakhstan wanted to do. And this is, it, wa it wanted basically to spy on people. So what it did, it, it uses an HTTPS proxy, terminating uh, TLS termination proxy for all its citizens, right? It tried to. And it forced, it wanted everybody to uninstall a root certificate on every single device on Kazakhstan. And I'm going to reference the, the link below, all right? It wanted to do that. And I think it's, it's now, uh, it's, it's, uh, they didn't, uh, that didn't happen, I think, right? I think that didn't happen yet, but uh, here's what we wanted to do. They wanted to install that root certificates in government of Kazakhstan to be a trusted certificate root, right? to be installed in every device. So now, if I am a, if I am a citizen in, in Kazakhstan, I'm using my Android phone, and I have the government of Kazakhstan root certificate, and I want to go to Google, first, they will not allow you to access the internet without going through their HTTPS proxy. That, that's very easy because their ISPs are, they have ISP in their pockets. So they can do, now they can forward all the traffic, HTTPS traffic and HTTP. HTTP is easy, you know, obviously everybody can see that. But I'm talking about HTTPS. They terminate the HTTPS. They, they negotiate the keys between you and that HTTPS proxy and return a certificate claiming them to be Google right signed by the government of kazakhstan certificate authority shipped back right and first of all it's going to make that a cost on behalf google give back the results and then get the content and then ship back the certificate of that's claimed to be google to the client and the client now will look at the certificate oh do i trust this 
let me look at my certificate roots on my machine and oh government of kazakhstan i trust this thing this is pretty good trust it and when it's trusted you can establish the tcp connection once you establish it you start sending information and they terminate the tls they decrypt the traffic they look at your what you're searching they can make decisions and if it's good they re-encrypt it in the back end and, and talk to google they wanted to do that i don't believe they they was they succeeded because it's a huge invasion of privacy obviously right yeah, so that's that's uh, some topic about certificate and certificate authority. Let me know, guys, if you have some questions, uh, write them below on the description. Uh, description, you cannot write in the description. Write them below in the comment section, and uh, I'm gonna see you on the next one. There are a lot of topics. This is a very beefy topic. I can I can talk for, about this for a long time, and I am pretty much I, I missed a lot of stuff. So let me know what do you have, what questions do you have, what do you think about this topic. And uh, do you think we have an alternative for to certificates, a third party, uh, third party certificate authorities? Do you or not? Let me know in the comment section below. I know there is like end-to-end -end encryption that uh, allows you to do that uh, with kind of fingerprints and all that stuff, but I don't know much about it. So for you guys expert out there, let me know in the comment section below. Let's have a discussion. And I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.